Hey, welcome and thanks for stopping by. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is August 24th. It is Wednesday. We have a habit of looking at OTC and penny stocks in this show. We like to look at stocks that have got the attention of the investors. Now, that may just be a lot of tweets over on Twitter, or it could be some ripping technicals, or it could be highlighted news. Now, we call that highlighted because I brought it to your attention. This is news I've looked at over the last five days from the OTC market, the oldest news is at the top newest news is going to be down at the bottom now I say it's all OTC news because we look at penny stocks as well now yeah those are all penny stocks absolutely but a penny stock can be on any market because it is classified as any stock under five dollars and there are lots of those on the Nasdaq and the New York Stock Exchange which is cool because those are free to trade I lose $14 round trip doing an OTC stock. So I'm intrigued to play the NASDAQ stocks and they aren't shy about putting money on the table. You got an entirely different group of investors up there on the major exchange than you do the OTC. So yeah, I like to dabble with the NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange. So we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is where I always do my research. If ever you watch my videos, this is where I'm gonna be, folks. It's never outdated. I just don't see the purpose of jumping around from site to site from Google's direction when I can just come here and get it right the first time I find it. Makes life simple, makes your research simple, and you can get a lot more done in less time. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. It looks like it was worse than yesterday. Yes, it is. Across the board, every single factor has fallen. Our dollar volume has fallen. I think we were at $2 billion. We're down to $1.4. That's really low. Our share volume, we were just under $10 billion, 9.8. It has fallen again. You know, we had a habit of going over 10, then back under 10, over 10, and then back under. This is two dips under 10. I'm not liking that at all. It could actually be three if you consider the one before that. Trades, gee whiz, we are under the basement floor. I've been calling the basement floor 250,000 trades, which is about where she hovers. Well, we're below that now at 233. So it was a slow day again on the market but of course every single day there are some stocks that are just catching the wind and flying and I got a couple today and I got one that just well it went to the moon absolutely come on I'll show you what I got we're gonna start this show off with the moon landing this is EVTN and viral technologies this thing was soaring today she started running right when the bell went off and has been running all day long she had some huge company changing news come out today and there were bonuses involved for the investors so there was all kinds of excitement around EVTN she finished today at 26 cents with over 550 percent gains she is on the pink tier she's current she's got a transfer agent verify that's Good, but we do not have our verified profile we would like to see that it's not that important that it's going to get the stock pulled off the market but hey we like verified information especially with a pink now EVTN is in business they are making money it's just not very much right now they got a grant mm, back in 2017 and they've been working on that ever since it's just kind of dwindled away to almost nothing so this news is perfectly timed and really going to change everything for the company so what does the company actually do? Well, they've got a product that they sell, a patented product that uses a special type of technology for separating mixed fluids and particles. They tell us down here it's the Voraxio separator, and it's a technology that efficiently separates liquids from liquids, or liquids from solids, or even mixed liquids from solids. And you can use this in the water industry, the oil industry, for oil spills. You use it for manufacturing, waste to energy. They even use it in food processing industry. So it has a lot of uses. They just aren't getting a lot of business right now. And this news that came out today, man, it is perfectly tailored for what's happening with this company. So what was the relative volume around this stock today? What? Oh my God, both numbers are low. 743 shares a day is all she's doing. That's not even going to show up on the chart. And today we've only got 2.1 million, but we got 550% gains out of that. Whoa, imagine what this will get when it gets some real volume. You know, I've got to suspect that this has a low flow. Just a feeling, shazam, look at that. 3.2 million shares. This is a super duper low flow. This is going to move just because there's, look, 
Today they did what? 2 million shares. There's only 3.2 million shares in the float. So if tomorrow they do 5 million, that means they have to sell every single share that's out there in the market, plus some. That's supply and demand, and that helps the stock price to rise really fast. But what I'm noticing here is the authorized shares. Look at how many they got. A quarter billion shares. That is a ton of shares, considering we only got 3 million on a float. So they could dilute the heck out of the shareholders by putting those on the market, or they can use them as bank. You don't have to make an acquisition with money. You can give them a bunch of shares in your company and you can get what it is you want. What are their financials? They are making some money. It's just been getting less and less. Now remember, we got three zeros here we gotta put behind these numbers. So you can see they have been getting less and less. This is the end of last year at $107,000. And quarterly, is it getting any better? No, it's getting even worse. So as I said, the news is very timely. Disclosures, what do we have over here? We know all of their financial filings are on time because they're paying current and we have no SEC filings over here. So we're gonna go straight over to the news. Now virtually all of the news over here is outdated. This is all from 2015, but they did import one piece of news and it is for today. They tell us here, you know, as a matter of fact, this is probably gonna be easier if I just explain it to you because it's a very unique situation. It's an acquisition being done through a reverse merger that is actually playing out as a spin out <laughs> Let me walk you through this. All right, remember I just got done telling you that they got a ton of authorized shares. It's bank and they could use those shares to actually make an acquisition. Buy a company with it. Well, that's what they've done. And this is how it plays out. And Viro is using 13 million shares, no cash, just shares, to buy Banner Midstream Corp, which is the subsidiary of EcoArc Holdings. They are on the NASDAQ under ticker ZEST. Now remember, this company only has outstanding share count of 5.5 million. So this is gonna kick up that share count big time, right? We're way over that. But what's most important is that this is more shares than anybody else owns. Look, it is 70% of all the shares of this company. What we've got here is a change of control. That's right, Eco Hark Holdings is now in control of EVTN. Now just so you're aware of what this banner midstream is all about, this is gonna actually help this company as far as I can see. EcoHark, I'm looking at their description here, owns quite a lot of different various subsidiaries. And Banner provides trucking and other services for oil and gas service companies. Well, that's right up their lane. I mean, they've got a product that they can use in the oil industry, so maybe all these people could end up being customers. This company also has another subsidiary called Zest Labs, which is offering solutions for breakthrough approach to quality management of fresh food. Well, we saw that this product they've got can be used in the food industry too. I don't know if there's any crossover, but we're seeing something here. But there is bigger news that really got people excited. As soon as the company got control, as soon as EcoHeart got control, they made some decisions. And the first one they said they are going to do is effect a four to one forward split so that they've got enough shares so that they can issue out dividend shares to the shareholders of EcoHark because this is a spin out. This was one of EcoHark's subsidiaries and it spun out through an acquisition, through a reverse merger, but it is now on the market, isn't it? It's under ticker EVTN. So all the shareholders in EcoHart Holdings get shares as dividends for this spin out. So this company is also gonna be kicking their shares out four times as much. So if you have a thousand shares, when this happens, you'll have 4,000. And if the price is at 40 cents, it's gonna drop down to 10 cents. And that's very exciting. Yes, investors love forward splits. So let's go see what the chart looks like. She was cooking today. She took a little break, but went right back to soaring. Let me show you. We are now taking a look at EVTN, six month, four hour chart. Our charting is being done on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. If you like it, you can go get one yourself. Go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for their free trading account. Just keep your account open and you can use this anytime you like for free.
So we are looking at EVTN, a six month, four hour chart, and there's a lot of days missing here. Now remember, she was doing 743 shares average daily over the last 30 days. Well, we got a big jump here. You can see she's been falling downhill under the 50, hit a low bubble, did fall back down after bouncing up, and then had this big jump here. And I haven't got a clue what that's about. It's on July 28th. There was no news and I didn't do any deep dives, so I'm not real sure. However, this was on July 28th. The very next day is August 10th. So we've got quite a few days in there that there was no trading. And you can see what's going on today. Today is ripping it up. Volume is showing up on the board. Technicals are screaming. Look at that, folks. Every single thing is going up. 20 day, one hour version. All right, so we had nothing going on the days before. Had a low bubble. I'm not going to say that was yesterday. That was the 19th. That was the 19th. We had a low bubble. And then today, the 24th, we got our run. Our technicals are screaming. Everything is hot. We are almost into the overbought on the RSI. And all the rest are still pointing up. If your oscillators are pointing up, there's no way you're going to be losing money. I assure you that. Let's look at that five-day, five-minute. All right, that is pretty much all today. We got two other days here, the 19th, which is when we hit a low bubble. I don't think that's the catalyst for the jump. No, I think it's probably the news press, though the low bubble doesn't hurt whatsoever. Lots of volume in the morning. You can see when the volume fell off is when the price started to dip. She broke our 20-day SMA here and rode right back up on top of it. Here comes our 50-day SMA into the picture. She is still climbing, pushing away from the 50-day. Hit a high here of 38 cents. 38 cents. Didn't we see 26 cents when we were just looking at it over there? Well, it's a lot higher than that, for goodness sakes. We got 38 cents here, not 26. And we've got some volume coming in. Technicals are still pretty strong. Uh, MACD and PPO are still pushing up. Our ADX shows that our trend is now getting steady again. And our RSI is in the low 60s. It is really looking good. Now, I think this is probably going to sell because of the forward split. I mean, there's a lot going on with this company. They have potential to get business for their product, their Foraxio separator, now that they're working in the oil industry and maybe even the food industry because of EcoArc. You have new management that's come in, but you've got that forward split. <laughs> Investors love free stuff. So they're gonna get four times as many shares, we're not sure when, and the price will fall. Right now we're almost 40 cents after the split, it will be down to 10 cents. And if you had a thousand shares, you're gonna have 4,000 shares. Oh, everybody loves that, so I think we'll probably see some more run out of this simply because of the forward split. I'd put EVTN on your list to watch tomorrow and I would just be watching the news to find out when the split is going to occur. They'll give us a cutoff date. All the shares you own up till that cutoff date will be qualified for free shares. Now here's something most people won't tell you and it's probably debatable with some people but let's say the date is on the 30th. On the 31st it's over. You know, whatever you buy is not going to be qualifying for your free shares. But also, what did qualify, you don't have to hold anymore. You could literally sell them on the first of the month because all you had to do was have them counted on the 30th. On the first, nobody's paying attention. And you will still get your free shares from that company even though you sold all your stock the very next day. Check it out. It's true. We're now taking a look at a stock on the NASDAQ. Now remember, I said any stock under $5 qualifies as a penny stock regardless of what market it's on. So this fits right in there. This is ticker SPRC SciSpark Limited. She did have a news press come out today and it was very interesting news. And as far as I'm concerned, it really is just the tip of the iceberg. So they finished the day at just over $1.11 with about 20% gains. Now there was a lot more gains on the table. She had a huge run and then she pulled back really hard and she is sitting just around the 200 looking like she's about ready to take off. And as I said, the news to me is just the tip of the iceberg so I can see more to come pretty easily. Uh, so what does this company do? Well, they 
do have a business, but they're not making any money. I haven't seen anything out there. Uh, this company is working with THC and CBD therapies for very specific ailments, stuff such as Alzheimer's disease, ASD, epilepsy, and other things. So what was the relative volume around the news today? Big. She normally does about a million shares a day. Today she did 66 times that much, just over 66 million shares. Float. What do we got over here? Well, they don't tell me what the float is, but you know, it really doesn't matter. I can see what their outstanding shares are, 3 million. So whatever the float is, it is a very, very small float. So we're liking that. Financials. As I said, I did look earlier and they've got nothing here. Not yearly, not quarterly. And because we are on the OTC markets, we may not get as much information as we would somewhere else. So I don't know if shell risk would even show up over here. But the bottom line is they're not making any money right now. Disclosures. Anything new over here? Uh, we've got a 6K that came out five days ago. I did peek my head into this. It had to do with them putting out some warrants. That was about it. And I could show you the news, but half the time I go over here, the news is missing. That's why I always like to save the pages. So I do have the news sitting right over here. This came out today. SciSpark, a specialty clinical stage pharmaceutical company focusing on the development of therapies to treat disorders of the central nervous system, today announced additional positive preclinical results of its psychedelic-based pharma collaboration for treatment of cocaine addiction using MIA, a novel psychedelic molecule of Clear Mind Medicine, another company on the OTC, ticker CMNDF. They go on to tell us we're very excited about these recent results in light of the potential synergistic effect between SciSpark's canamide drug and ClearMind's MIA molecule as previously demonstrated. These results continue to indicate that we may have targeted treatment for cocaine addiction right within our reach. Then they put out a very important statement here. These results reinforce our decision to enter a collaboration between the two companies. Boom. Now, I don't know if we're talking about a merger, a joint venture, or what we're talking about, but you got two companies sitting here with a possible cure for cocaine addiction with a special molecule and whatever this company has got with that, uh, what do they call their canamide? Canamide and Mia molecule are supposedly helping with cocaine addiction. So this is new information. We've not ever read anything about any company having anything like this before. So just the cure could be big. And the fact that the two companies have got something that they're going to be doing in the future could also be big. Like I said, tip of the iceberg. Now let's go take a look at that chart and I'll show you what I think is probably going to happen. That is a six month, four hour chart for SPRC. As you can see, she has been falling the entire six months. We had a high back here of $7.10 and about maybe a week ago, a low of 86. Boy, she has a lot of bounces, a lot of spikes. Even though she's falling downhill, she's still giving away money as she's doing it. And she had another spike today. What makes that spike different than all the rest is the volume. That is the hugest volume spike on the entire six month chart. Now she's got a long ways to go before she hits that 200, but she is firmly above the 50 and sitting on top of it. It was a strong pullback off of her high. Technicals are very strong across the board, except for the RSI, which has had a pullback, but it looks like it's actually trying to climb again. Let's look at that 20 day, one hour chart. So she's still giving away money. She's popping. It looks like most of these pops are happening in the aftermarket, pre-market time. There are some during the day. And today's was a nice jump. You can see all the volume here. She jumped right off of the 50 on top of the 200. She did hit a high here and has fallen right to the 200. Hopefully she's just testing that and wants to take off. Our technicals aren't really giving us a whole lot of signal of it bouncing. They show she's sitting on it right now five day, five minute. So there's her giving away money every few days with these nice bounces. And we had a big jump first thing this morning, pre-market. She jumped from about 90 cents up to $1.44. So you've got 50% jump there. She pulled back real strong and then took another lurch as soon as the bell went off. And she pulled back 10 minutes into the day. 
940, she was falling back already. She had a bounce here. It looked like she was going to actually continue her climb. And then look at that severe drop. That was a very quick drop here, and she fell all the way down almost to the 200. She didn't actually hit it. She hasn't hit it yet. She's float bouncing across the top here, and this looks like a curve. These are bounces, but this one here looks like it is now starting to pull back up. Our technicals, that is what they show. They show we are just in the midst of recovery. Now, we're going to watch this, but remember, the news is just the tip of the iceberg. First, you've got it. eye cure for cocaine addiction maybe we need to get some more information on that and that could be huge and then you've got a deal we don't know what kind of deal could be made between these companies that's still to come too so we do have things coming right now the stock showed a lot of potential it did jump uh, about uh, 60 70 percent before it fell and she is on an incline right now so I'd keep my eye on SPRC, especially watching the news. When it comes out with news, this probably is going to take off. This next stock we're taking a look at, you probably remember, this is TXTM. If you can't remember why you recall it, it's because of the reverse merger that happened back in July with Republic of South Africa Medical Marijuana Dispensaries Acquisitions. What a mouthful. If you want to say the shorter version, it's R-S-A-M-M-D-A. Is that any easier? So this happened back in June. There was no filings today. There were no news presses today, but she did have a jump. A tweet came out from the founder. And basically, we're going to look at the tweet, but to sum it up, he is saying, get ready, get set, and that's where it's sitting right now. So before the gun shoots and they say go, I thought you might want to get this back on your radar. So TXTM finished the day at 0031 with almost 33% gains. Now it seems to me the last time we looked at this, she was pink current. She is now on the limited tier, which means she is late on one or more of her filings. And if she's late too long, they'll yank her off of the open market and put her on the expert market. And she'll stay there until she gets her filings caught up. And then they'll be put back on the open market. And while she's gone, you cannot buy or sell their shares. So hopefully they get that taken care of soon. And we'll see which one it is when we get over to disclosures. They do have a verified profile, but we do not see a verified transfer agent. We do want to see that. So what was the relative volume around that tweet today? Well, she's normally doing, wow, about 100 million shares a day. Not exactly what I'd call light trading. And today she did 82% more, 182 million shares. A nice jump. Share structure, what do we got over here? Uh-oh, this ain't looking good. They don't tell us what the unrestricted shares are or the float, but I see the outstanding shares is 7.8 billion shares and the DTC though I don't constitute it as the float that is part of the float it's always part of it so we know there's at least 3.9 billion in this float so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go look it up and toss it right up there for you if you don't see it hopefully you see three question marks it means I didn't forget but you should see a float up there and chances are it's not gonna be a real nice number financials what do we got going on over here absolutely nothing annually and quarterly zip so they're not making any money, and we do not see Shell Risk or Shell Company listed up here either. That's a little curious. All right, they are pink limited. They are late on one or more of their filings. Let's see what we got going on over here. This is the period that they are filing for, and this is the date when they filed. So I'm looking at their annual report. That was filed in December, and you must have an attorney letter with every annual report. That came in as well, so that's good. We have, uh, oh, that is a late filing for March. But there's their quarterly report for March. They were late. That came in May. And June's, no. No, that's change of control, which is an important document, but that's got nothing to do with being current. So it looks like they're missing one financial report, the most recent one for June. Once they get that caught up, they should be pink again. Any other SEC filings down here? No, nothing here at all. So we're going to jump on over to the news. Now, we're really not going to look at any of the news because it isn't why the stock is moving today. But I'm going to advise that you read this news press here from the 1st of August. This is the new CEO telling us what's going on with the company. It's pretty big. It's a long one. There's a lot of information in there. He's telling you about all the hurdles and all of the legalities of setting up what they're doing and why it's important they get it just right. So what does have this thing running? I told you it's that tweet. So let's take a look at that. 
Now this is a response to a question somebody else asked. You're not gonna actually find this on the company's Twitter account. And speaking of that, this is the company's Twitter account, Dylan Du Pluey. You see right here, founder of RSAMMD, CEO, Protex Mobility, TXTM. So if you want information on TXTM, don't go putting that into the search bar. That's not where you're gonna find the company's information. It's over here at Dylan Du Pluey's Twitter account. So two days ago, he put out this tweet. If you go read my last post, you'll see the OTC requested a NOBO list at the last minute while we were filing ahead of schedule. Now it's been requested and we are waiting for it to arrive in order to complete the change of control and gain access to upload the financials. Now that's a lot of information there. First off, what the heck is a NOBO? A NOBO is a non-objecting beneficial owner. This is a filing the shareholders are non objecting beneficial owners are shareholders who have objected to the disclosure of their identities and share positions. If you file it, you can say no, you can't disclose my information or yes, you can disclose my information. And once they get a yes, you can disclose my information from the beneficial shareholders, we're going to get the change of control filings and the financials filed. And that's what everybody's waiting for. We wanna know what the company is worth. What is the South African medical marijuana dispensary company worth? What are their assets? Then we'll know better what we can bid on this stock. So once the NOBO comes in and they file it, then they're gonna have the change of control finish and we'll get our financials and this stock will probably start running again. Let's go take a look at that chart. Now that's what I call a rip. This is TXTM six month, four hour chart. And boy, did she rip. We looked at this on the day that they announced the reverse merger with the South African Medical Marijuana Dispensary Acquisition Company. <sighs> And it ran for days. It started down here at 0.018 and ran to two cents. You can think of that as 18 to 200. That was 1,100% gains. But she gave it away and fell fast. She fell all the way down to the 50, bounced off of that, then fell again and crashed down to the 200, bounced off of that, and is now falling all the way down here, almost to where all this fun began. Our technicals right now, uh, we got a crossover on the MACD. Looks like she's ready to start climbing. RSI has come out of the basement, though it does look a little passive right now. And we've got a setup here, our PPO on the top and our ADX on the bottom. That's the way you want to set them up on your charts. We look for a pattern where the blue line on the top squeezes in with the red and then comes back out. So we see the squeeze happening here. That's when she's falling. And then when she starts to spread, you start getting a rise. I think you'll see this better on the 20 day one hour. Yes. So just think of this black line down the middle as being separating two mirrors. You can see how when she was falling and the red line and blue line are closing in on each other, the price is absolutely falling. And if I put my line between the green and the red here, you can see that's as close as she got right there. And as soon as the blue and red line started separating, that's when you got your price to start climbing. And right now it looks like it is still ready to continue climbing. Our MACD has just crossed the signal line and our RSI is approaching 60. And she is way below the 200 on the one hour as well. And she's fighting that 50 day right now. She is stuck between the 10 day and the 50 getting squeezed. And I expect her to pop on top of the 50 with the big bar, which will give her the strength to push to that 200. Let's take a look at that five day, five minute. We have success breaking the 200 today. In the middle of the day, she finally got over and look at how much power she got. Once she got that off of her back, once she was on top of the 200 and did a reversal, she shot straight up. And you can see, putting our surge marks in there, she is above the 50% mark. She kept more than half of her gains. Right now, she looks to be sitting on the 50-day SMA climbing up. What do our technicals say? Well, our PPO is above the pink and it is pushing away, starting to climb. MACD, we've got an imminent crossover there. And well, the RSI is just sitting there doing nothing. But we are at the get ready, get set, 
We're standing on the line right now, waiting for that gun to go off. We're waiting for the no-bo to be filed. Then we're going to get the change of control finished, and then they can put out the financials, and we'll have the numbers, and hopefully they're going to be big numbers, and we'll get this stock running again. So those are three companies that definitely caught my attention today. We've got two of them that have change of control, ticker TXTM and EVTN. They got things that are happening. We don't know how it's going to settle, so we're going to keep our eyes on those. Then we've got the other one that has a cure for cocaine addiction. That could be huge, not to mention there's some sort of collaboration going on with the two companies. So you're going to want to watch the news for all of these tickers. That's where the action is going to happen from. Once the news comes out, they're going to take off. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.